Hey everyone, Dan with Mac Rumors, and yesterday at the Google I.O. keynote, Google unveiled its latest version of Android, Android P, and the OS shares some very similar features to the iPhone X. Google emphasized three main themes of Android P, simplicity, intelligence, and digital well-being. We will touch on the other two a bit later in this video, but the main theme that will stick out to most iOS users is Google's new simplistic gesture-based navigation. The back, home, and menu buttons have been swapped for an oblong navigation button that will enable new gestures based on specific swipes. For example, if you want to access your recent apps, you can just give a little swipe up from the bottom and you will see a really nice card layout of all your recent applications. The apps are slightly functional too, mostly giving users the ability to quickly select and copy text without having to fully open the application. Tapping on the app icon itself will also present more options like your split screen mode. You'll also notice that the Google search bar is still present in this window, as well as some applications that Google predicts you might want to use based off of your habits. If you want to access your full app drawer, you can give the display another swipe from the bottom when in your recent app screen, or one long swipe from the bottom up on your home screen will also take you into the app drawer. The back button is still present at times, which is helpful and a bit more useful to me rather than swiping to go backwards like an iOS. I am also a fan of Google's implementation of the quick scrub feature, which lets you swap between recently used apps. On iOS, this is limited to one app at a time, while simply holding down the navigation button on Android gives you the ability to scrub through more apps than just one at a time. It's a really nice touch. I'll admit that I was a bit skeptical at first of the swipe-based navigation on the iPhone, but like any new feature, you learn to get used to it pretty quickly, and I started to wish that all phones had this same functionality. Now I'm well aware that most people will see this as Google copying Apple, but I'm for all companies adopting other features and implementing them into its own products if it means a better user experience. Whether everyone feels this way or not is unknown, but we would love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. As mentioned earlier, intelligence and digital well-being were other main themes for Android P, and some cool features to come from this are a revamped do not disturb mode with a new feature called shush, which will activate whenever your phone is turned face down. This will automatically silence all alerts with the exception of user specified contacts. There's also a new wind down mode, which will help users better prepare for bed and hopefully reduce the amount of screen time one is getting just before they fall asleep. Users can set a specific bedtime and the UI will turn gray to discourage you from using your phone at night. This feature also ties in with Google's new digital well-being initiative, an Android dashboard that will allow users to learn how much time is spent on the phone and within individual apps to hopefully help maximize meaningful engagement. You can set time limits on applications and after that time limit is reached, the app's icon will be gray out for the rest of the day, hopefully discouraging you from using it. We expect digital health tools to be a focus for Apple as well in iOS 12, and it will be interesting to see what features Apple will introduce to help better our digital well-being. Other useful features mentioned at Google I.O. include adaptive brightness, which doesn't sound very new, but Google's take is to help adjust your brightness automatically based on user preference, so it will learn how you like your brightness settings in certain places and times of the day, and it will set the brightness level for you. There's also an adaptive battery feature in which Android predicts which apps you will use in the next couple of hours, and then only provides battery for those apps, restricting it from others to improve the overall battery life of Android phones. Finally, a couple of small but extremely useful features include a simplified volume control interface and a better auto rotation method. For volume, pressing the volume buttons will usually toggle the settings for your phone's ringer, which to be honest, is probably always on silent anyways. With Android P, the volume buttons default to media playback and will definitely help avoid those awkward situations where your phone is blasting a video at full volume in public. As far as auto rotation goes, I use my phone in portrait mode about 99% of the time, but for that 1%, it's a bit of a pain to go into your quick toggles or settings menu and disable the rotation lock every time you want to rotate your phone. In Android P, when your phone is locked in portrait mode and you rotate your phone in landscape, an icon will appear, allowing your phone to adjust the rotation of the screen. Turn back to portrait and tap the icon again to go back. This is a super useful feature in my opinion. What are your thoughts on Android P and the new features that they announced? Are you happy to see more phones will adopt the new iPhone 10 swipe style UI? Let us know in the comment section down below. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.